can you calculate the equity beta when there is a change in the capital structure? Let's look at an example and at the equations. The effect of leverage on a firm's securities can be expressed in terms of beta. Beta of the unlevered or oil equity firm would be the percent of equity times the beta of equity plus the percent of debt multiplied by the beta of debt. Unlevered beta is a measure of the risk of a firm as if it did not have leverage, which is equivalent to the beta of the firm's assets. Note, if you are trying to estimate the unlevered beta of firms um, for an investment project, you should base your estimate on the unlevered betas of firms with comparable investments. That is why in our cases, we unlever the equity betas using the Hamada equation to calculate asset betas and then average the asset betas of all the comparable companies and then relever that asset beta with the appropriate debt equity structure for our company. Leverage, financing with, partly with debt, increases the market risk of a firm's assets, beta sub u raising the market risk of its equity. Equity beta equals the asset or unlevered beta plus the debt equity ratio multiplied by the unlevered beta minus the beta of debt. That's the equation on the top of this slide. But us look at an example from the textbook. Suppose a uh, drug retailer, CVS, has an equity beta of 0.8 and an initial debt equity ratio of 0 0.1 and a debt beta of zero. And then suppose CVS were to increase its debt so that its debt equity ratio becomes 0 0.5. Assuming its beta debt is still zero, what would you expect its equity beta to be after the increase in leverage? We can estimate the unlevered or asset beta for CVS using a textbook equation 14.8. The asset beta is the percent of equity times the beta of equity plus the percent of debt times the beta of debt. Remember, the debt beta is assumed to be zero here, so the equation reduces to the percent of equity multiplied by the equity beta. Using the original debt equity ratio of 0.1, if debt of equity is 0.1, then the percent of equity, equity divided by debt plus equity, equals 1 divided by 0.1 plus 1 which is equal to 0 0.090990, which we then will multiply by the equity beta of 0.8 to get an asset beta of 0.7273. With the increase in leverage, CVS's equity beta will increase according to equation 14.9 in the text. The equity beta will equal the asset beta plus the debt equity ratio multiplied by the asset beta minus the debt beta. But again, remember that the debt beta equals zero here. So the equity beta will equal 0 0.727373 plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.727373 minus zero, which equals 1.0909. Let me share um, with the the Excel for you and show you how I did this work. So the debt is 0.1, the equity is 
0.1, the debt equity ratio 0.1, uh, debt percent equity being then 0.0909. We had a debt at an e beta of equity 0.8. So the percent of equity times the beta of equity is 0.0909 times 0.8 or 0.727273. Now increase the debt equity ratio to 0.5 and our new equity beta using the equation you see here, the new equity beta is the original asset beta plus the debt equity ratio in this example 0.9 times the unlevered beta or asset beta, which we have found is 0.7273 minus the debt beta, which is zero here. So the new equity beta equals 1.0909. So let me go back to the PowerPoint. So CPS's equity beta and equity cost of capital will increase with leverage. Note that if CVS's debt beta increased from zero, the impact of leverage on its firm's as equity beta would be somewhat lower if debt holders share some of the firm's market risk. The equity holders will need to bear less of it. So you can use this example here in a problem and also in um, a case. Thank you.